COVID-19, Implications of Complexity Science. Stuart Kaufman, medical doctor and scientist for over 50 years, is a MacArthur Fellow and author of hundreds of articles and six books. Here are his perspectives on COVID-19. I want to talk to us today about COVID-19. There are really two essential ideas that I think are not well known that I want to get across. Here are two ideas. Idea one is that social distancing works, but only if it is maintained at or above 80%, because that will slow the spread of the disease. Idea two is that the rate of spread will be either exponential if we do not maintain social distance or the safer logistic if we do maintain social distance at or above 80%. What is the difference between these two predictions? If we do nothing to socially isolate, uh, COVID-19 will spread and grow exponentially fast. It will just go and keep going up. If we do social isolation at the level that's effective, COVID-19 will increase and then it will level off and this disease will stop spreading. This is happening now in China. It's happening in Italy. We can make it happen in the United States. If we get control of COVID-19 and the outbreaks slow and stop, as they have in China and in Hong Kong, we haven't won yet. Already there's evidence that post shutdown in Hong Kong, the disease is starting to spread again. We will not solve this for a long time until we have a vaccine and the population of humanity is well vaccinated. The next thing I want to tell us about is a study that was done at Imperial College in London by Ferguson et al. Uh, March 16th. Uh, they estimate for the UK and the US that if nothing is done and the disease spreads exponentially, in England about 500,000 people will die. In the United States, 2.2 million people will die. There are 7.8 billion of us. In the worst case, when this spreads, a very approximate number is that on the order of 50 to 55 million people could die. To scale this for us all, World War II saw 40 million people die. It is imperative that we understand that with sufficient social isolation, so the disease switches from exponential to logistic and saturates, we can dramatically drop the death rate from something like 50 million to very much less than that. I'll, I'll get to it in a moment. So what is it about 80%? Why does it matter? This is figure two in the Ferguson study, and the different curves are showing the effects of different degrees of social isolation from closing schools to people staying at home to shutting down different organizations and so on. And again, this is dates from March 20th, April 20th, May 20th, and so on. The red line is emergency bed critical care units in England. It's a flat line. If the curve goes above the flat line, hospitals will be overwhelmed and they will not find beds, they will not find uh, uh, oxygen, they will not find people able to take care of them. In short, this is the fear that our medical health care system, in England in this case, will be overwhelmed. Notice where the red line is. The message is that we can bring the curve down significantly, their study shows, and lower the peak and delay it if we use all the social isolation mechanisms that we have. Well, that's happening right now in Europe. Uh, England has gone to lockdown, perhaps because the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, saw the study uh, of the group in Imperial. We are at an extraordinarily dangerous moment. It is time, for example, for the governors in the United States to have their hands on these two studies, for everybody in Congress to have their hands on these two studies, I'm now going to show you Gabor Bate's analysis that came out two or three days ago looking at the actual uh, events in China and now in Italy. So what Bate did is he looked at what happened in Hubei uh, province in China and he is plotting on the y-axis here the rate of spread of the virus 
per day. So it starts at 15%. That means that each day the number of infected, this is actually deaths, but it's the same thing, the number of infected is going up by 15%. But what is happening, which is the huge hope, is that as the disease spreads, because it's now logistic and it's spreading in isolated pockets, the rate of spread of the disease slows from 15% to 10%. I'm now going to show you the same results uh, for daily growth rate of deaths uh, as a function of the cumulative number of deaths in Italy. And we're seeing the same thing. It starts in Italy spreading at about 25% a day, and it gradually trends downward in that data, as you can see, so that by, in this case, 2,500 deaths, what a horrible thing to be using as a marker, it's dropped from 25% to 15% spreading per day. Here's a way to visualize what these two predictions will result in, exponential or much slower logistic growth of the disease. Stephen Guerin, a computer model expert, thinks of it this way. Imagine a dense forest, a fire breaks out, and because of that density, the whole forest burns down. Now, think of a sparsely treed forest. The fire cannot spread because of the distance between the trees. It's just like the way COVID-19 spreads. So, you can see that at some critical point, that distancing of trees or people makes a vast difference. What does 80% mean about the virus spread? Think of it this way. 80% of the population spends 80% of their time at home. This breaks down to one or two trips to the grocery store, the pharmacy, or the gas station, or perhaps walking your dog once a day. Being outside is okay as long as you can maintain the social distance of 6 to 8 feet away, like in a park or a hiking trail. This Japanese video shows of the spread of droplets that are expressed when someone coughs or even speaks loudly. We clearly see the range of distance that needs to be observed when we are around other people. We also see that a mask can prevent this droplet spread along with social distancing, which provides us with added safety. The experts who track the change in the spread of the disease can tell us when the disease has changed from an exponential to a safer logistic growth. The percent increase of the spread of the disease per day will slow. We will need to maintain 80% social distancing until the spread stops. Dr. Kaufman stresses, while waiting 12 to 18 months for vaccines, we must now search for antivirals against COVID-19 that can be in the field much sooner. A first choice is to screen FDA-approved drugs. There, there are undoubtedly thousands of FDA-approved drugs already in the United States. The basic idea is to screen those drugs to see if any of them can act to block COVID-19. We need to do everything we can to encourage such efforts on a maximum scale. COVID-19 is currently infecting more than 220,000 Americans and has claimed 5,200 lives in the U.S. alone, 30,000 in Europe. The researchers in this film strongly recommend the following in order to stem the exponential rise of this pandemic. In order to flatten the exponential disease spread to the safer logistic curve, social distancing must be maintained at 80% or above for an extended period of time. All FDA-approved drugs must be screened for effectiveness both exclusively and in combination with each other. And finally, accelerate the worldwide testing and application of various antiviral drugs until a vaccine is found.